that. This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. We have a KitchenAid dishwasher that is not draining. We've got to figure out what's going on. It does make a noise when you set it for drain. You can hear like a kind of a rubbing noise and also it does drain a little bit but pretty anemic. So we're going to try to figure out what's going on. First thing we'll try is just to get in from the top to see if there's any obvious obstruction. So I'm taking out the filter and then the screen filter and I'm just going to reach in there into the drain area and see if I can feel anything obvious. Usually this will not be the cause of, of the drain obstruction, but it's worth just giving it a try. Reaching in down, I don't feel anything. So we're going to look at a couple other possibilities. So I'm going to set it for a drain. <clears throat> I'll close it and just see what kind of uh, sounds and reaction I get. So I'm going to take off this bottom panel here by turning with a standard head screwdriver and then this plastic plate will come off and the drain's actually right in front of you. On this model it's really easy to get to. You don't even have to take the machine out of the cabinet and do all the work right from the front. So you want to make sure it's unplugged or you turn off the breaker and then we're going to just ladle out all that water that's in there because I want to take off the drain hose and make sure there's nothing caught in it. If you remove the drain hose and there's water in here, a lot leaks out the bottom. So it's good to just ladle this stuff out. And then I use a turkey baster to just grab any remnant water there at the bottom. So pretty much we have a, what we call a dry sump, no water in that filter area. I'm going to look in there too to see if I see anything obvious. But yeah, everything looks pretty clear. So now I'll use the pliers to loosen the hose clamp on this drain hose and then I'm going to pull the drain hose off and I'm just going to peer into the drain hose and also into the drain and I don't, I don't see anything obvious. You can also blow through that drain hose and uh, air should be able to go from this direction out toward the sink. So I think what I'll do is I'll remove this little drain motor and see if there's something caught in that area. And to do that, I just have to remove the uh, little power connector. There's a tab I'm going to push down on and then pull it out. And then I need to turn the whole drain motor counterclockwise, like to my left, away from me. There's a little catch there that I'm going to release that holds it back. I'm going to use a small standard head screwdriver to pry back on that release and then I'll grab that motor and turn it away from me to my left or again if you're looking at it from the front it would be going counterclockwise and that lets go and then I'm just going to check the impeller looks okay looks like something was rubbing against it but it spins fine and then when I look in there I found a glass shard so this was what was doing the problem. It was a piece of maybe a bowl or a wine glass that got pulled into the drain system. It was rubbing against the impeller and blocking the path of the water. So the, the impeller and the motor look good, so I'm just going to put them back in. I'm going to go in, and then I'm going to turn clockwise to my right to lock it in. And just make sure it's really on there tight before you put everything back together. Put the power connector back on. I'll put the drain hose back on and then I'm going to pinch that hose clamp with some pliers and make sure that drain hose is pushed in toward the drain as far as it'll go. So I got to make sure that's really on there strong. Feels good. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the little wire for the power back on over, over a little uh, stay that kind of keeps the wire protected. And then we'll give it a try. We'll set it for drain. And yeah, now it's draining the water and it doesn't have that rubbing sound. So that was just that glass shard. So we're just going to put things back together, put the screen back in, put the triple filter back in, twist it, make sure it's on there tight so nothing can sneak past it. We'll put the lower spray arm back on by putting it down on top and then turning the little nut that locks it in. So this is a pretty easy procedure on this KitchenAid. 
because you have access to that pump right in front of you once you remove that lower panel. Just kind of make sure you get the water out before you remove that because a lot of water could leak out on you. And now I'm just listening to it at the sink draining. That sounds good. These guys will be happy to do dishes again. So last thing is we just put that panel back in, put the insulation behind it, get it in a position, and then you put these little pieces in, and then you take a standard head screwdriver and twist them just 90 degrees to lock them in. So KitchenAid is actually made by Whirlpool. This would work for most Whirlpool dishwashers. And some of them you have to remove the dishwasher from the cabinet to get to the drain motor. But again, this type is great because it's just sitting right there, easy to grab. So I hope this has been helpful to you and you get your dishwasher going again. It should just take you a few minutes. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and please like this video. Thanks again.